One, two, one, two, three, four. Well, it's going on Saturday. Why don't we get away, darling? It's going on Saturday, oh, why don't we get away now? Oh, who love me? Take me on your train and love me. Because it's going on Saturday, oh, why don't we get away now? Well, I would not need nothing more if I could come on board, darling. Well, I would not need nothing more if I could come on board now. More if I could come aboard now Well, we could rent a car Or drive up to New England Hop a plane Fly to San Rafael Take a boat Sail it to Bermuda Oh, we could ride your railroad on Excellent. Thanks for coming in. It's yeah, great. It's great to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right. Um, so starting off the very beginning, way back when, you so you uh, grew up in Long Island. Right. Um, not exactly a hotbed of country and blues, eh? Not really. <laughs> well, what was it that got you into uh, into music and specifically kind of Americana style music? Uh, we had some great DJs that came along. Uh, people on the old, uh, when FM radio started coming around, Pete Fornatel, people like that. Uh, so they started playing some stuff that I'd never heard before. And I think a big part of it, too, was uh, the whole, like, what we called country rock back then was really what Americana is today, where the birds came out with Sweetheart of the Rodeo and Dylan started playing country, and then there was the band. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that changed everything for me. I said, wow, this is something I really like, and, and I could play it, too. <laughs> So uh, after growing up in Long Island, where did your travels take you? Uh, New England for a bunch of years, Rhode Island in particular, up for five years. The old, any old Harpo and Slapshot mm-hmm. fans out there, that was our, that was our band then. And uh, then uh, a little bit of New York City, and then Los Angeles for a long time, o- over 10 years out in L.A. Came back uh, a little bit to uh, New England again in Connecticut, and, uh, and then North Carolina, which is my home now, you know. Well, did each of those areas uh, kind of really change your music each time you moved? I mean, e- each area is so different from the from the next. I I, I really can't say that it did. I, I think if it, the area that probably had the most influence on my music is where I am right now in North Carolina. Well, what brought uh, you here? Oh, uh, <laughs> empty nesting, so to speak, a little bit. Uh, daughters out of the house. My wife and I are looking for a cool college town which Chapel Hill certainly is. Good music scene for me, which the whole triangle is and the whole state is. Best picking in the world in North Carolina. And, uh, and, and, a, and a warmer climate. I had enough of winters. Yeah. 
Well, how has the triangle really cultivated your style? Oh, uh, I, I could point out one person in particular, and that's Chris Stamey. Uh, Chris Stamey is uh, both my engineer, well, first my friend. Uh, great engineers helped me tremendously on my albums, uh, helped me co-produce them, and a uh, world-class bass player because Chris plays bass on my records. And, uh, and, of course, I found Charlie Chamberlain over here uh, when he was living in Chapel Hill and uh, another godsend to me, you know, and uh, tours with me and uh, makes me feel young. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of Charlie, you have uh, a, quite a diverse group of, of folks that helped you out on your latest album, Ghosts. <clears throat> How did you find all these these folks that uh, wanted to lend their helping hand? Well, first, there's, I'd be remiss if I don't mention our, our fiddle player, Bobby Britt, who's just a fantastic fiddle player, lives across the street from Chris Stamey. He just came walking across one day. Chris said, hey, why don't we try this guy who lives across the street? And Bobby's been on all three of my albums, and he's terrific. So he was right down here. Uh, Peter Holsapple, of course, was a DB's veteran with, with Chris. He's on the record. Uh, Lisa Lashow, uh, who plays flute, she's also... Uh, hooked in with Chris. And there's Jim Eisenberg, who, this is a weird story, he was a banjo player who my wife knew in New York 30 years ago. Happened to learn banjo over the last 30 years, came in and played great banjo on the new record. So, uh, and, and of course, the great pedal steel player of all time, Al Perkins up in Nashville, mm -hmm. and uh, who we kind of cultivated and uh, has been on my last two records and is just a great player too. Well, how have you developed as a songwriter from your first album to the, to the third one, the one where you're at now? Um, I think part of it is uh, you, you keep looking for different things that, that turn you on that make you want to write uh, and get more introspective, I, I think. And, and so different things happen during these periods of time. Uh, the economy goes bad, so Mr. Tell Me About the Great Depression gets written. <clears throat> my aunt dies, so the song gets written about my aunt. Uh, things, different things happen. Things happen to uh, my children and I write about them, my wife, uh, and the good night, Carrie, I'm coming home from the second album, and, and my mother uh, gets involved. I, I write a lot about family, I write a lot about politics, so mm -hmm. I just grab what's ever out there and whatever makes me write words on a piece of paper. Well, what I think is incredible about Ghosts is it's um, the reception it's received in, in uh, Europe. How how have you built up that, that European following and, and why? What is what is it about over there that's been you know so receptive of you? Well, I knew first that Americana music, for whatever reason, everybody asks the question, nobody has a simple answer. Americana music, very well received in uh, the UK, Scotland, uh, Holland, Belgium, Germany, and, and Scandinavia. And so I, I, I tried to cultivate that, and there's an association there called the Euro-Americana Association. And I started sending them my first record, and then that didn't chart. The second one, Love One Out, all of a sudden reached number 11, and they were listening to it and liking what they heard. And Ghosts, right out of the box, hit number five on their chart. So I said, well, I think we're marketing right anyway. So uh, that, that all worked out okay. And been touring over there a lot. Well, you're about to go over there, is that correct? Charlie and I go back there. We hit New York first, uh, bitter end on April 20th, and then the 21st of April we leave to go uh, back to uh, England and Scotland for two weeks. Mm-hmm. Uh, any particular venues over there that you really love to play, or? Yeah, um, there, there's a there's, and not necessarily by by size. There's a little place called the Leith Folk Club in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful little uh, room off the side of a pub, and people come there, and you can hear a pin drop while you play. And I love that we're playing over there. Uh, there's also a place in St Andrews, Scotland, called the Inn at Lathones. Um, Great people playing over there. Um, Mick Taylor from the Stones was just there. Uh, the Little Feet was playing their acoustic. I thought I'd be an opening act. I was very flattered that we got the headline there. We'll be playing over there. Kinky Friedman was just there, and Susan Tedeschi, and you know these, you know, great people. And, and again, they, it's a converted barn in Scotland, strictly listening place. And they actually hand out pieces of paper saying, "Listen." <laughs> well, um, okay, going back to ghosts, I want to dissect it a little bit. Um, your songwriting, there's there's not too many hooks when you listen when you listen to that album, but you paint these pictures, you tell these stories. Could you talk about that songwriting and um, how you get to a final product? Yeah, you know, it's it's what's influencing me at any particular time. I don't sit there and say, you know, this will be a great song for AAA radio or this will be great for Americana. I write what's coming out on a piece of paper and, and see where it goes from there. And sometimes it turns into a you know, a rootsy kind of song. Sometimes it turns into a, a jazzy type of thing or, or a Latin type of feel. 
Um, I don't want to look for a hook. Um, I come up with like a line, you know, Mr. Tell Me About the Great Depression, and then the rest of the words come there, and it just, it, it just works. I don't, there's no formula, I guess is what I'm trying to tell you. So do you, uh, do you typically start with a, um, with a line, or do you, do you start with like a guitar riff? Where do you, where do you begin in your songwriting? Nine times out of ten, it's, I'm lyric-driven. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll, you know, I might come up with a title or a line. Mm -hmm. That line may not, I think it's going to be the title, but it may be wind up only being a line in a verse someplace. Right. Um, and then there's other times where, you know, that line is, is the, what you call the hook. It's, it's the, you know, it's the main line and the chorus and the title of the song. It's mm -hmm. just, but uh, it's, it's however it comes out. I don't try to contrive it. Mm -hmm. Well, Ghost is only two months old. And as you mentioned, you're, uh, you're heading to Europe. But uh, what, what's next for Tokyo Rosenthal? Uh, I, you know, I, I'm I'm not the least bit jaded by all of this. I just I love going out on tour. I love playing with Charlie every night, and and, and doing our thing, and uh, just getting around. I mean, I haven't played much west of the Rockies, so I, I you know I got a lot of touring to do yet in this country, and go back over to Europe again, and just try to spread the word, and uh, and then eventually get in and do another record. Excellent. Well, let's hear some more tunes. You got it. So uh, this next one. <clears throat> Here's one you might have heard on the radio. If not, please call up and recommend it. From the Love One Out album. Features Charlie over here. This one's uh, off the uh, Ghost album that we were talking about earlier. 
Yeah, it's a very introspective song, and it, it's called There Is No Perfect Love, and that's good advice. In there, Charlie. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm of the firm belief uh, that every musician should have at least one unconditional fan. Uh, mine's a little cliche. It's my mom. And uh, mom called me one day and she says, "Hey, Tok, you know you don't have to wait until I die to write a song about me." I said, you know, I just don't put them in the oven, Mom, and they come out. But, but Mom is very spiritual, and no matter how much adversity she goes through in life, uh, she continually and continuously thanks God. So that gave us the tune, and still she thanks God. Every draw, every door that opens brings distress. A constant guest at her address inside a little echo. And yet, gets up each day, never being sure. Searching for the cure, ready for that tour life will take her. Mastering how to change your 
hand And rearrange the cards Hard as it may get Doubling down her bed Still she thanks God Where there was two There now is one I felt that loss too Shared a view Got paid a loo Of other favors Time heals All wounds And maybe more But an open soul Is an easy load To stop fighting a fan running in the sand still she thanks God play with me Charlie Thank you, Ma, if you're watching out there. Hi, Mom. For everything. Uh, a couple of years back, I was fortunate to have a minor hit up in Canada with a song called Edmonton. And for you aspiring singer-songwriters out there, if you ever want to get on the radio, write a song about a city that's never had a song written about it before. <laughs> and maybe you'll get the key to the city like I did up there. It was a lot of fun. But when I got back home, people like Charlie and other people were on in my face saying, Hey, Toke, you know, you got to write a song now about Carolina. You don't want everybody to think you're Canadian, do you? I said, not that that's a bad thing. So I, after realizing that nothing could be finer than to be in Carolina was already taken, uh, with a little help from my daughter, the poet, we came up with... Uh, the song way back on the one score and ten record. It's called Too Late for Me, Carolina. Light came on, but much too late. Too late for me, Carolina. The truth be told. more for me than carried on so sure sure as my heart beats tonight I'll sing it no from Carita 
your invitation Destined for the trash Despite my distress To delete you Um, one more for you. Just a quick reminder, if you like what you're hearing, uh, check out uh, TokyoRosenthal.com, www.TokyoRosenthal.com, or www.CharlieChamberlain.com. It's been a pleasure to be here on Sessions at Studio B. This last song, <clears throat> for those of you who haven't been reading the papers, the economy hasn't been going real good lately, has it? I had a grandfather, we called him Poppy Jack. Poppy Jack used to tell me about the Great Depression back in 1929 to 1939. I don't think he ever dreamed that we'd be in the economic mess that we're back into right now. So this is a futuristic song, picture 30 years from now. Little boy sitting on a front doorstep, maybe talking to me, maybe talking to Charlie, and uh, asking him how we got in the mess that we got into. It's from the new Ghost album called Mr. Tell Me About the Great Depression. Wasn't no place to hide No place to sit out the ride Seems like we hadn't learned our lesson Just to tell me about the Great Depression Spent it all on war and oil in the mortgage soil Enjoy the free lunch and ask for a pension Just to tell me about the Great Depression Did we really start that war? Superpower ain't smart no more But did they really Tell me about the Great Depression Tell me about it, Charlie Couldn't account for the deception 
tried to print more, but made no impression. We voted them off public trust And they turned it all to rust It came after they stole the election Just tell me about the Great Depression Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me they could have cured that tumor Mister, tell me about the Great Depression For Charlie Chamberlain, I'm Sophia Rosenthal Good night, Carrie, I'm coming home